Hey guys, so in this one, we are going to recreate the synth section from Easy by Matzo and Porter Robinson. This is um, a favorite of mine because I feel like it's a good balance between Matzo sound design and Porter sound design. So here is the section that we are going to be All right, and um, here is where I got it to. Okay, so um, I got pretty close, but I think it's not as clear. There's some things going on in the high end that I couldn't quite match perfectly. But I will go over the main synths in this. I believe there's about four main sounds to go over. So I will start just showing you each of the layers real fast. So there's a super saw. Then there is a bass layer. And then we have a piano layer. And then we have this mid layer, which is doing quite a bit of work in this entire synth stack. Okay, and then I also have this little high lead, which is um, kind of a duplicate of the mid lead, just an octave above. And we have these little shakers that come in as well to fill out the beat. Um, for now, I'm going to turn off this reverb send so I can speak properly. And we will start with the super saw group. So the notes that I arrived at for these saws are right here. And the second section just extends this third chord. So if you look at these chords, the notes of the chord are kind of duplicated um, throughout this octave range here. So there's a lot of harmonics and a lot of frequencies that are being covered here. So for this first sound, I will take off the processing that we have here. So this is what the sound is with just a saw wave and some white noise. And one thing to note is that I added a little bit of release for this sound. So in the space between notes, it doesn't cut off right away. Okay, so then I pushed it up to seven voices to create the super saw and the detune around 0.17. And I also turned on this linear fold to kind of dirty it up a little bit, just a little bit of distortion. And here's what that sounds like. Okay, and then just some compression to control the sound a little bit as well. Okay, and then I added a little bit of overdrive as well, just to add some warmth in this area right here. And then this EQ came in to provide space for the mid lead as well as the bass. So I took a lot out in the low mids and then did a low cut. And then I'm emphasizing a little bit of the 1K range as well as a little high roll off. So this first layer is a lower noise layer. And I added this because it sounded like there was some dirt 
kind of noise going on in the lower end. So this is what it sounds like. And again, that was just some noise in Serum. Uh, I'm using some decapitator on the E setting to drive it a bit, make it a little bit more dirty and muddy. And then I'm just EQing it so it's not too intense. It's not in the sub regions or the higher region. So the second white noise is pretty much the same thing. I just have the noise a little higher up in pitch, but I'm also distorting it a bit to kind of get a little bit more crunch in the high end. So this is what it sounds like. So well as that, I'm doing the decapitator again. I tried some stuff with isotope trash in the high end just to try and get some proper distortion, but I couldn't quite recreate what Matzo and Porter had done in the high end. And then just some EQ to set it right with the saws and the mix overall. So if I show you just those noise layers together, and then the entire saw group, And I'm also sending this group to this chorus return just a little bit. There's not too much going on. And if I turn on the reverb again, which I'm sending to, this is the full saws. Okay, so this reverb send I'm just um, cutting out the lows using Valhalla. For this reverb, I've been finding that pulling back on the size and the attack uh, kind of gives a more realistic reverb sound. And then I'm also brightening it up with some decapitator as well. And then just some further low cutting to remove any of the, the dirt that would have come from that distortion. And then I'm also side chaining it to the mid lead just so it pumps back in in between notes and it's kind of compressed out of the way as notes are hitting. So I will turn that off again and go through the bass sound. So here's what the bass sounds like on its own. So for this sound, I used a combination of a plain saw for the sub and the second harmonic because in the original track it seemed like the first two harmonics were pretty strong overall. So I figured if I used a saw wave I could get those pretty strong and then I also layered this which was a saw wave and I went to process remove fundamental so the first fundamental is not as strong. And then I gave it some voices, detune around 0.09. So it kind of creates this Reese bass in the sub, but it's also pretty uniform and powerful. And it's going to be reliable throughout. And then I'm just EQing a touch, not really that much. I added some reverb as well. So there would be a little bit of low content in between notes that would linger on after the note hits. So if I play those two together, the bass and saws, this is what we get. Okay, and then I layered the bass and the saws together so I could do a little bit of processing together. Um, so I'm just doing some dynamic EQ in the low range to kind of crunch those frequencies together and then I'm giving it back some more gain just so I can try and have a more consistent tight low end uh, between those two sounds. So the next sound to go over would be the piano and if you'd like to know the notes these are the notes and then in the second section so the pianos on their own sound like this
So I used the giants in contact for this and these notes needed to be pretty hard hit. So I just left the settings as is, um, didn't want it to go soft at all. And then I pushed it up uh, with a utility just to get some gain. And then I'm compressing it to create a very sharp attack. So if I take off the other processing that we have going on here, this is what it sounds like. If I turn off the compressor, it's just beginning to emphasize the initial hit of the sound, which is what we want. And then I used another reverb to give it that long decay and that big space. And then using a decapitator as well to brighten it up. And then I'm using an EQ just to cut out the lows and then just emphasizing those higher harmonics so they can pop through the mix a little bit more. And then I threw it into a limiter to cut off those peaks and give it a little bit more gain. And then finally, I'm using an EQ to emphasize those highs a little bit more and then just control the fundamentals of those hits. Okay, so the piano and the bass and saws together comes to this. All right, so moving on to the lead sound, um, it follows the same notes as the piano. I believe it just this first note comes down instead of up. So taking off all the processing and just leaving a plain saw wave, this is the sound. So I knew that this needed to have some more voices. So I pushed this up to eight, detune around 0.05. And then I used the linear fold distortion to distort it and give it that classic kind of Matzo Porter sound. And then for this EQ, I'm using the macro to automate the high end. And I'm also using this macro to automate the vibrato that comes in. So for the vibrato, I'm using this LFO one. I put it on the fine tuning. I was around 36 going both ways. And I found 6.5 Hertz rate was proper for the right vibrato sound. So if uh, I play it without the macro one engaged, this is what we get. And if I show you the macro one information, here's what it sounds like. Okay, so that's how we get that main sound. And then again, I was using Isotope Trash to try and distort that high end a little bit more. And then I used this EQ to kind of brighten up the high end a little bit, um, take out some of the lows, as well as try to emphasize this area right here around 580. And if I turn that third little EQ node off, it sounds like this. But if I turn that on, it just gives it this like throaty quality and it matched what Matzo and Porter had done. It kind of gives it more of a, a voice, I think. Okay, and then I use a limiter just to keep it controlled and cut off. And then I did some side EQ. Um, just to kind of keep the fundamental in the middle a little bit. 
And this gain right here is to kind of bring it in over time. At the beginning, it sounded like at the very beginning of the original song, it wasn't very noticeable for this first hit, but then it comes in around here. And yeah, so that is the mid lead sound. This high lead sound is essentially just the exact same patch, it's just an octave up. And I just felt like it was needed to kind of give it a high end boost. So if I play those together, we get this and I will turn on the reverb as well, which this mid channel is being sent to as well. And another thing to note for this uh, mid lead is right here we have this little like grace note that comes in to kind of give it this little character at the end here. Okay, so if I play all of those together now we get pretty much the entire thing. So I'll turn this reverb. So yeah, that is pretty much the entire sound for this. Um, I also tried to just test this out with a kick to kind of see uh, what it would sound like. So if you'd like to hear that, this is where it's kind of at. It's not really the right type of kick for this, but you can kind of get the idea. Yeah, so that is pretty much the entire sound. Um, I hope this helped you guys. I'm going to try and do some more Porter stuff and got some other mouse stuff on the way as well. Um, so if this helped you, uh, please just give a like and subscribe if you wouldn't mind. And just let me know how I could be of more use to you guys. And I thank you guys for watching the video and I will see you guys in the next one.